Okay, so in this episode, I'm gonna focus on building out a little bit of stuff for the memory management strategy that the code base is gonna use. Uh, basically, there are gonna be three main things that I do for memory management in the code base. First, I'm going to build at the very bottom of it a little sort of, uh, you might call it like plugin interface. Not That's not like a big complicated thing. It's gonna be very small. Uh, you might just call it a wrapper. Uh, but it's just something to give us the ability to put in different base level allocators to power the rest of the system. I find this convenient because it's sometimes nice to just plug in malloc or some other uh, source of memory into all of your memory allocation management algorithms so that when they need more memory, they can get it from whatever thing you want. Uh, it, it's just a convenient thing to have. Second, we're going to build a 64-bit style arena. Uh, we might have occasion someday to do a 32-bit style arena as well. The difference being that in 64-bit address spaces, it's a lot more reasonable to assume you can grab a reservation of the amount of space you're actually going to need, uh, but only commit parts of it at a time uh, because you have many gigabytes worth of space you can reserve. You obviously don't want to commit all of it, but the issues around being organized and only taking little bits at a time are less difficult to deal with when you have that much space to spread things out. In 32-bit address spaces, we would want something that does less to focus on contiguous allocation ranges and actually gives blocks of memory or something. So the algorithm will be styled to 64-bit. It won't actually be 64-bit until we do the OS layer uh, because we'll just be using malloc to plug in to the uh, base memory stuff at first. But once we can, we'll have a 64-bit allocator in there. And then uh, finally, we'll do some helpers on top of that. But before I do any of those three major things, I'm gonna take just a minute to organize the base stuff a little more. Okay, so there we have the extra little bit of separation there. The main thing I'm thinking there is what I include at the user side and where I organize the code are slightly separate concepts. They, they are, there's a reason to think that I don't want them to vary together. I might want two separate vertexes there, or I don't know, whatever phrase you want to use nodes in the system, you know, names uh, to reserve the concepts, whatever, whatever you want to think about it. The point is the, the rule is now, if you include base ink, you get everything. And then each main concept in the base system will be in one of the files that's included by these ink files, right? So now both sides are kind of served. The organizational side of where each thing goes in each file uh, can be free to do whatever it wants. And we don't end up with a mess of like one file that has a bunch of shared stuff then includes other stuff. And if you want to use them, you, it's hard to separate them out or vice versa, a bunch of things that all include this one central thing. And so it's getting included over and over again. We don't have any of those problems. It's just we have a list of files that we might want. And then if you want all of them, there's just a nice helper that grabs all of them for you. Now we're gonna go ahead and throw in some base memory stuff. Uh, of course, with the standard library of C, we don't have a commit and decommit distinction. We can't separate out the concept of allocating a range of addresses to a particular purpose, at, which is the reserve, and telling the operating system we're actually going to use some of it, which is the commit. We can't separate those. All we get is malloc, which couples them, and free, which couples the, the release of both concepts, right? So what this means is that when you use this base memory thing, if you're not using one that can commit and decommit, you actually still can get away with it because commit and decommit are just sort of annotating what's going on with the memory. If you use an alternative that doesn't actually do anything on the commit or decommit and just 
does a full allocation and full free on reserve and release, you get the same thing you would have gotten in terms of correctness. It's just you might be allocating more memory than you should if you're using a helper that assumed it could grab a 10 gigabyte reserve or something. So we'll have to be a little bit careful about how we combine the malloc plugin uh, that we have over here on the right hand side with users that will assume that it's a 64-bit address space, perhaps when they shouldn't. Uh, but it's uh, it's good enough to get the outline in there for now. We'll be able to test everything else. It looks like this basically works. We can at least do the malloc as expected. So let's take a look now at building that 64-bit style uh, reserve and commit arena. All right, so um, there's the arena stuff. I wrote some of it, and it's a little complicated. So there's there's a good chance there's a bug in there, but I'm I'm not uh, I'm just not too stressed about it. If a bug pops up later, I feel like it it is something I don't mind debugging. Then, so I haven't actually oops I didn't mean to do that. I haven't actually tested that the pop is working. Like I said, I just don't think it's going to be that hard to diagnose it and fix it. If that is an issue, we'll just be getting memory crashes, and we'll you know, debug that once whenever it ha starts happening. Uh, so to give you a little idea of the structure of how the arena is set up here, I also have a default block size and I didn't make that a parameter of the system. That might be something useful to do later on, but I'm not too worried about it. It's a very optimization-y thing. The way it works is uh, once you start pushing, it first uses the current position in the arena to figure out if the new thing you pushed on, the, the amount you asked for will fit inside of that chunk. If not, you're just gonna get a null pointer. We're gonna basically write code as if we'll never get null pointers. And if we do end up getting a null pointer, we know we just didn't reserve enough up front, and we have to rethink how much memory we're using or something else. Uh, essentially, this is us accepting that there's a finite limit to the memory resource and not pretending like it's infinite. And it's also us not making every last thing super complicated to guard against the potential that a null comes back. Instead, what we're gonna do is prioritize the concept that whatever code we write, it has to have been built in such a way that running out of memory isn't a problem for it if we actually got the reserve in the first place. So hopefully that concept uh, makes sense. That's that's the approach I'll be going with is make re remove the need for error code to exist rather than writing lots of it. So. We're just going to return zeros, and if that ever gets hit, it'll cause a crash, but hopefully it never gets hit, and if it does, it's our job to figure out why and, and fix that instead of avoiding the zero somehow. Uh, then it will 
double check that the commit size is big enough too. So in addition to the normal position, it has a commit position and it just goes, hey, if the after that last increment, all of the bytes behind the position value are now available to a user. Everything after the position is still sort of in the arena's control. Nobody's supposed to be touching that yet. But stuff that came, stuff that we just returned from the last call includes every byte up to the new position that the arena is at. So what we want to do is check that the new position, um, or check if the new position is has exceeded the amount we've committed so far. And if it has, then that means there's at least one byte that if the user touched it, it would cause a crash, but we told them it was ready. So we have to make it ready. And so what we do is we uh, figure out where the next commit block will happen. There's just like an alignment that's happening here of that 64 meg block. So it figures out where that next one is, make sure that that actually fits inside of what the arena has to begin with, because you know we could be making an arena with less than 64 megs, and I don't want this to only work on that granularity if that's what's happening or something weird like that. So double check that it's going to be able to uh, commit to that point by just clamping so that it doesn't go past the end of the actual reserve and then it figures out how much it needs to commit to go from the position where the commit was at to the position where the commit will go to now and then apply that commit afterwards update the position and the pop is very similar it makes sure that if we apply this that it actually is a pop it's not allowed to go forwards by popping so the position has to be less than the position we already have and then apply it that part's pretty easy then it has to also take a look and say is there a uh, is there sort of an, are we overcommitted now? Did we commit stuff? Uh, do we have a block on the arena that's committed that is, could be decommitted? The whole block at once could be, de could it all be decommitted at once so that the operating system has that memory available to other processes? And uh, we actually won't be touching it anymore, right? Or at least not until another push happens. So to do that, it just takes a look and sees, well, if I line up the same way I would have when I went to push a commit, maybe I will line up and see that the position I would have pushed to is uh, above or below where I'm actually committed to already. So if, if in the future I could just recommit that block, it will mean that right now that next commit position is actually less than the commit position I'm at. So if that happens, we can decommit the amount between where it's at and where the the aligned up above the current position is. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, basically, we just have these big chunks that we're committing and decommitting whenever we can afford to. So we're keeping it as tight as possible. We're not doing anything smart with the decommits, which we could be doing like only applying them sometimes just to do extra or to do less work and exchange for memory. Again, uh, uh, optimization stuff that I'm not too worried about. This is a little chunky, but it's a nice, simple, organized system. I'm happy with it to get us up and running. Okay, so there's only one thing left I want to do to really uh, tie off the memory management uh, uh, stuff, and that's that these arenas are going to end up forming the basis of a lot of stuff that I do in this code base. I just know that from experience, the way I like to use them, they're going to get, they're going to get used a lot. So I want them to be prepared with a little bit of an extra nice interface. They're going to have a privileged position. Their names are going to be um, outside of their memory namespace. So I, I put them all in this M namespace to get like the definitions in there, but the actual contact point that gets used in a lot of cases won't be that those names, I'll actually have it using just some helper names that make things a little uh, even smaller and easier to use than this. I also want uh, just a couple other helpers. Uh, I want there to be a way to construct a memory arena on top of the malloc base without having to do an extra line of code that grabs that malloc base as well. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna go through and tidy up some of these uh, things we can make helpers for now.